Hi, I'm Ryan Miller, and I want to tell you how I became a storyteller. Now, what happened was I arrived at the airport in Rome with a suitcase, a couple hundred dollars in Canadian money, and not much of a plan. See, I was uh, following a, a woman I loved who was from Rome and she lived there. She came to pick me up. We were very excited. That was basically all I had planned out. I sort of had this loose idea that I had just graduated, I'm an English speaker, I would become an English teacher. But I applied for some jobs, nothing really came of it. And so my loose plan quickly, uh, or slowly rather, became a little more anxious, a little, and then I realized I'm screwed. And so I'm scouring the, the want ads in the uh, a magazine at that time, and I saw an ad that intrigued me for a tour guide. So I went, I applied, I got an interview, I went to meet the, the head of that company in Piazza Navona, in the center of Rome, had a glass of red wine, and I left with a new job as a tour guide in Rome. Now, I started the next day and I, I shadowed some tour guides and I listened to their stories and uh, explaining <coughs> the significance of the, the art and the monuments in, in St. Peter's Square and St. Peter's Basilica. I shadowed them, I read up, I started giving my own tours and I quickly discovered that tour, uh, tourists, when they come to Rome, they, they want to know the information, they want to know the inside scoop, the, the facts, the dates, the names, you know, the, the subjects of the works of art. But those are more like just the, uh, the ingredients. The, the meal, the main event, is the stories. These wonderful stories that, that, uh, that populate the history and, and the present of Rome, all about uh, Michelangelo frescoing the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, um, basically spiting uh, a rival who tried to torpedo his career, and uh, you know the <clears throat> the stories of the the popes and the Swiss guards and the uh, the conquerors and the the failed attempts to conquer and the these colorful lives of the artists. It just on and on and on. All of this amazing information. I would just inhale it from other tours and from books as I walked the city and, uh, you know, spoke with friends and, and then I would exhale them as stories on my tours. I went from St. Peter's Basilica to the Vatican to the Colosseum and, of course, everything about the Colosseum and the, uh, the, <clears throat> the bright Renaissance uh, monuments and uh, uh, fountains. In the, in the center of the city, and it just became so much a part of my life, uh, you know, I didn't even notice how much I was learning about how to interact with an audience, how to notice when they wanted to hear more, when there was room for another tag on a joke I was telling, uh, when they wanted uh, more detail in a story, or when they wanted me to move on, or when they wanted to hear something else, or couldn't pay attention because, you know, maybe they needed to pee, or they needed a glass of water, or a gelato, or whatever. and. I didn't notice at the time that I was becoming a storyteller. I was learning how to take information, take ideas, take knowledge, and turn it into something and learn how to present it to other people and give it to them in a, in a way that they could enjoy it, digest it, and it could stay with them after the fact, long after the fact. And this is so amazing to me uh, because it was such a gift and I didn't realize it at the time and in fact only recently did I really understand what a profound effect my time as a tour guide has had on me and had on my future and my, my present. And in fact it's especially funny because I even turned my story of my life as a tour guide into a one-man storytelling show that I took to the Edinburgh Fringe and toured around Europe as well. Uh, and even then, I didn't quite understand the effect it had. But I'm, I'm, I'm ever grateful for, uh, for that time, and I will always love the city of Rome and what it's given to me.